Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome to episode 15 of Europa Universalis 4 as Japan. I know a lot of you guys are probably really waiting for me to go to war with Korea and it's something that I desperately want to do. But we have just got out of our Regency Council. Uh, Ming is willing to come and join the war with us, but the rest of our... Um, the rest of our allies aren't. Uh, you won't come in because of... Um, their defensive attitude towards us. Meow won't come in because of a defensive attitude towards us. It's a distant war. So we may end up having to break that alliance. Yeren won't come in because they are in debt and it's a distant war and all kinds of crap. All of his allies will come in. Now Ming, being on our side, would be useful. But we saw Ming's army get decimated by 3,000 peasants. So I think we are going to hold off for a little while. Not only that, we are still behind Korea in military tech. Uh, we've got a rebel uprising or separatist uprising ready to pop up here at any moment. Uh, we've also got 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 thousand uh, men from our army down here currently working to um, uh, colonize Taiwan so my army is basically split up all over the place right now so we need to wait a little a little while I'm going to go through and just carry on making sure that we uh, fabricate all of these claims in Taiwan I'm going to go over here actually with my ships and pick up um, some of these troops in fact I don't think we need them all there I think we could just go uh, we could just get away with having um, an army of four even though there's 6,000 natives natives are relatively weak so we, you don't need one-for-one one numbers. Bring some of the army back. Um, absent merchant gain mercantilism. Yes, every day of the week, without question. Mercantilism rocks. It'll help us. We're making decent money as Japan. I'll say that. We certainly, um, we certainly have a healthy economy. Be nice if we could get up to positive stability. We could also almost afford a level two advisor. I mean, in fact, we could actually in for afford a level two advisor. We could like go and get the reinforced speed guy. Although there was a um, a discipline guy there earlier who would have been better. Trade efficiency, diplomatic reputation. Either of those could be useful. National tax modifier. He's level three. Yearly prestige. Um, I mean, we are working on a Diplo group. Trade efficiency might not be too bad. He might pay for himself. We'll have a look. We'll we'll pay for him. We, if we start losing a ton of money, then um, we might have to do something else. Let's get you on the boat. Let's get the boat back over to mainland Japan. Drop you off. So how much are we making? 2.14. That's not, not terrible. I mean, we're not making 5 anymore, but considering the guy costs 5, I think... That's not too bad. So we'll get a little bit of extra Diplo power. We are above our diplomatic relations. Almost tempted to um, break the alliance now with Meow. But we did get a royal marriage. So we might as well um, hang on to the alliance until we can get rid of the royal marriage. Was rather hoping that they'd come in and get involved. Of course, we could just try and pick directly on one of his allies. Which is something that I hadn't really considered before. Instead of declaring war directly on Korea, we just um, declare war on one of his allies and it brings Korea in. Like this guy. This guy is allied with Korea and also allied with Sarig Yogir. And I have no idea who that is. Um, this guy. So you're probably not going to do an awful lot. Korchin's only got 3,000 troops. I reckon we just declare on Korchin, and that brings Korea into the war. I'd still love to be caught up with them technologically, though. 916 military power. November 1505. It's only two years, assuming they don't go up in the meantime. Now, of course, we won't co belligerize Korea. If we co belligerize them, they'll be able to bring in their allies. We don't want them to bring in their allies. So we it'll be more expensive to take stuff from them, but that's fine. This might be the way that we have to do things here. We'd also like all of this other crap, like separatists and everything, to go away so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's the only place where we've got provincial unrest. And I think most of that is... Are we converting there? I think we're still doing some religious conversion. Yeah. 
Oh, you're actually still making any progress? You are still making progress. You are likely to be finished in May of 1506. I'd like to start the war before then, to be honest. Our missionaries are quite crappy. So, I think we're going to go up to speed 4. Just because there's not an awful lot else we can do. We'll try and let those couple of years tick by. We'll make sure we get, we have as many claims on career as we can get. We'll try and take a lot of stuff from them. But I think that's the best thing to do. It means we still get to fight Korea. We want to try and land as many of our units over here as possible. So that we can just pounce on their army. But we really do want to make sure that we have the um, the same military tech level as them. So we'll, d we'll deal with Korea. If Korchin want to come... I mean, obviously we'll have to deal with um, Korchin as well. I don't think these guys are going to get involved too much. Uh, we've got a new heir. He's a 333. Not bad at all. Um, so we've got some units over here. Let's start shipping everybody over because it'll save time later. I don't think we're going to have too many issues over here on the mainland... Uh, right at the moment. We mean we, we might do. Something might happen, but I think in general we will be good. Uh, investing in a new technology is a Diplotech. I think we will grab that. We don't want to be behind times too long. We need to save up some Diplo power though, because we'll need it to get the peace deal. Really just wish we could sort this province out up here, and then I could recall these guys back. Where is all that unrest coming from? Mainly the separatism. Of course, the intolerance doesn't help as well. And the active missionary. You see, the un the unrest is 10.57. The active missionary is causing 6, and the intolerance is causing 4, uh, 0.38. So by the time you take off the intolerance, and by the time you take off the active missionary, um, you've already minus 10.38, and then the religious unity will go down a little bit more, so that will up a little bit more, so that will actually help. And uh, separatism's ticking down all the time. Lose a stability or gain three inflation. This game absolutely hates me, I'm telling you. So let's go ahead and um, kick up our stability once more. Looming disaster. We shouldn't have a looming disaster. Why do we have a looming disaster? Um, unrest lower than zero. Unrest is not lower than zero, so that should go away. Yep, there we go. That's ticked and disappeared now. And it also looks like we're getting a couple of troops from Jain Zhu, so they might not be terribly useful. We might e even be able to get Ming into this fight as well. Now, we are still working on that mission to get manpower. So, I'd like to try and also finish that before I declare war. Uh, I think we can still build troops. Yeah, we do actually have um, some force limit available. Let's go ahead and utilize that I think we need to get a couple of cavalry as well this might actually be what we've been waiting for now when did I say that that missionary was going to finish uh, May 1506 I think that might be the date that we wait for um, oh no the rebels have fired already so these guys will take a little bit of damage, but we should be able to get rid of those guys there. So that will actually reduce the unrest now, because it'll have recent uprising. Yeah, recent uprising minus 20. By the time that goes away, the missionary should be done. We are losing money now, for some reason. Well, we're reinforcing, so that makes sense. We don't need to have you there anymore. So we're going to go and pick you up with our transports. So, let our transports get over there. We might need to put our lights somewhere safe uh, while we do this war. That's quite a possibility. Uh, new technology. We're definitely going to go ahead and take that. Uh, we could take artillery now if we wanted to as well. We have just run out of force limit though, which is a little bit of a pain. Uh, not to worry. We need to make sure those um, ships get up there safely. Also, now we want to make sure that we grab... Um, oh, Colony has become self-sustaining. Um, excellent. So we want to... I guess we can leave these 4,000 troops here. They'll be fine. 
Um, co uh, colonist hasn't arrived home yet. Now he has. Uh, we want to call the province. Only 35 admin. That's not too bad. You can group together. Where are those transports? You're nearly there. And obviously what we'll also want to do is save up a little bit of military points because we will want to try and grab a military leader. Okay, you are still on tech 7. Uh, we, I think we're missing a claim as well. Uh, nope. We've got as many claims on you as we can get. Do we want to use that heavy? Are we going to need it? I don't think we're going to need naval superiority. At least I hope we don't need naval superiority. Um, we can get you over here now and pick you guys up. Are you currently at war with anybody? No, you are not. You're still allied with all the same guys. You are still allied with just the same guys. If I was to go to war with Korea right now, all of their allies would come in. Ming wouldn't come in. If I was to go to war with you, none of our allies would come in. Oh, we don't have a CB against them. Why, why did I not think of that? Derp. So that plan's gone out the window, isn't it? Because I don't have a CB against you. I can't fabricate any claims on you. Ugh. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. I bet you guys have been like shouting at the screen for the last two episodes. Oh well, not to worry. We will still find a way to go to war with Korea. Let's just go back down to uh, speed 3 while I just take stock of what is happening. Uh, we have managed to convert that province, which is good. That should reduce some of the uh, the unrest there now even more. So the unrest is actually minus 15%. Obviously, when that recent uprising goes away, uh, it says actually, I was going to say, yeah, the active missionary hadn't ticked off. So now the active missionary has disappeared. It's minus 20%. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, gain... Gain 50 admin power. Well, I don't really want to lose any legitimacy. Again, let's just spend a little bit of money and gain some prestige. So what do we do then? Do we continue thinking about going to war down here? And hopefully we can deal with these guys. Again, it'd be nice if Ming could come and help us. Um, Wu has a lot of troops. He has a lot of troops. See, I could fabricate against Wu and declare war on Wu. He would bring in Korea. He'd also bring in Shun and Chu, which are both pretty sizable. It would have just been so good if I could have declared war on Korchin. I mean, of course, I could just do it and take the, take the stability hit. Ming's fighting in another war. Who are you fighting against this time? Are you actually managing to incorporate any of these people, um, Ming? Because it doesn't look like you're actually growing any larger again. See, I have a sizable army. But so does this guy. And if he gets involved, then we've got problems. What's Wu's navy like? If we can get naval superiority, navies, Wu. Uh, Wu has six lights. He has a fair, fair few galleys and a fair few transports. He doesn't have enough transports to move all of his army at once. He can only move half of them. I mean, we could just try and sink his navy and stop him from being... But there again, obviously, you've got uh, Yan's navy. You've also got Korea's navy. So, it is very, very risky making an attempt to do that. Again, we've got a little bit more force limit. Let's keep using it. Let's go ahead and get artillery. Because that'll really help us out. Again, it would be nice to press the advantage while we are still the same military tech level. Let's make sure we keep improving relations with Ming. Wow. Um, nobles demand old rights. So again, we get another event that gives us 15% local autonomy everywhere or loses stability. Thanks, game. Thanks, game. I love random events that make us lose stability for no real 
legitimate reason at all, other than the game being a dick. It's like, it's not like it's not hard enough playing as one of the Eastern nations, but when you're constantly having to spend all of your um, monarch points just dealing with BS like that, it gets really annoying. Genzo is now a principality. Oh, this wasn't Genzo I wanted. It was you guys. Prove relations. So you had a military guy. It just says you are a militarist. If you're a militarist, build more troops. You have money. You have manpower. Why do you only have 3,000 men? You're a march, for heaven's sake. It was your idea. You wanted to be a march. Well, okay, we'll hopefully still manage to um, get up to a decent amount of manpower. I know I still keep burning through it by um, queuing up more units, but we definitely want to be able to do some damage on their numbers. Can't see their army at the moment, so I can't actually see if they have any cannons... Yeah, you've got no... Well, Corchin's behind in tech. You don't have any artillery. Um, Wu is also... Well, Wu's tech 7, so Wu might have artillery by now. Well, you're tech 7 as well. You're tech 6. You're probably already at your force limit, so you probably won't build any artillery until you lose some units. The same can probably be said for Wu. There we go. We've got our first artillery over here. We're still making money. Not huge amounts, but we are still making money. What about um, advisors? Could we get a better military advisor? We might have to sack, yeah, reinforce speed. Not too sure how useful you are at the moment. Morale of navies is pretty useless right now. And uh, yeah, we're on a we're on a six, seven, eight. We are still over our relationship limit. Still very much considering just breaking our relationship with Yeren when we get the chance. And just going to war with them. There's not really anyone else that we can fabricate on at the moment. Actually, we could fabricate on these guys. Let's go ahead and do that. At least it gives us someone to attack. Um, obviously, again, we still want to get up to that manpower limit. Because we'd like to do the mission if possible. Uh, it gives us reduced national unrest and it gives us more tax. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, how long is that going to take? Manpower 90%. Um, so we're looking at 33,000 less 3,000. So we, we are looking about 30,000. Well, it's just gone up now because we've got a autonomy drop down. So yeah, if we need 90% of that, we're looking about 30,000. So it will take a little bit of time to get there. Got my eye on you, Korea. I'll be coming after you at some point. Truce with Janzu has ended. Our agent was discovered fabricating that claim. That's not too terrible. How quickly are we recovering manpower? So, 276 each month. So, every four months we regain 1,000. And we still need another 7,000. So, we're still looking at 28 months. So, almost two and a half years. It's quite a long time. I am going to periodically just sort of check and just see, is anyone willing to join? Um, Ming's still in another war. He's still in debt. Yeren is still in debt, and they would consider Korea a distant war. See, it wasn't such a problem when they actually owned Yeren, but because they don't have a border now, they're not all that bothered. Um, Meow considers it a distant war. It's only minus... Um, need one more positive than negative reasons for an acceptance. Actually says they will most likely accept... Ah, there we go. So, at the moment, you would actually come into the war. Meow would come into the war. If only Ming would come in. Minus 125. Don't know how we currently get that back. If he wasn't in another war. Attitude towards enemies. Does he actually like them? Yeah, not sure Ming's actually going to help us in this. Um, 
But we may actually have an opportunity here. Have we got all of the um, claims? No, we've got another one we can make a claim on. But, uh, yeah, if we can get... I mean, Yu's quite far away, but he has 11,000 troops. If he deals with Wu... Because th those two between them have got 18,000. So they might be able to deal with Wu. If they can deal with Wu, I can deal with Korea, Korchin, and Yan. That is potentially the plan. I could get another unit. Of course, it's going to cost us um, manpower, which will once again uh, delay the time to complete that mission. But I certainly think we are going to need some artillery going in to be able to do anything effectively. And our force limit is actually going up each month, which makes it harder and harder to reach that number. But we are near the end of this video, so I'm not going to de de declare the war in this video. They will still come in. It'd be nice if one of these guys said no, uh, and one more of these guys said yes, either or, to be honest, I would jump in straight the way. Yeren probably is never going to get involved. I'm surprised at Ming, though. He's got war exhaustion. He's got no manpower. He's not in a war anymore, though. Uh, we've got that CB over there. Right, Ming's not in a war. So if we got rid of... Um, the war exhaustion, the manpower, and the attitude, that would still only be minus 101. So we'd still need to get rid of his debt. Yeah, it's not particularly looking likely that he's going to come in. Such a shame. Such a shame. I really do want to go to... I, I literally want to jump into a war with them, but I know if I do it now, it's going to end badly. Again, there's always the possibilities that these guys may get caught up in other stuff and may change their mind. Can we uh, suck up a little bit more to you? What's our improved relations at? 85. Can't suck up too much more, but we'll certainly do what we can. I'm also holding out hope that um, Zhenzu will actually build up some troops. Because just 3,000 is not enough to help. If they had 5 or 6... You know, that might actually be enough, but 3,000 makes them pretty pointless. We are at our force limit. Um, gain 10 army tradition. That's going to be really useful. Um, we'll spend the money to gain the prestige. Um, oh, another negative event. So, we can either gain local unrest in Jeju for five years, or they can gain autonomy. Oh, screw it. Just give them the autonomy. I'm not bothered. Just let that go away. So we've got 4,000 more troops down here. That would put us up to 33,000 there. Um, 33,000, 37. Yeah, the other 4,000 is all down there. Which we could potentially... Oh, that's growing quite slowly. We probably won't pull that stack out. Although it's quite risky, of course, that um, Wu might just send some troops down here and try and attack the colony. Which is a possibility. At least, I'd be quite happy, actually... I'd quite happily sacrifice 4,000 men and a colony um, if it kept their army busy while I dealt with Korea. That would certainly work. Is it worth getting that domestic trade power? What do we get next? Yearly prestige. I think we do want to start taking some idea groups. We are behind in Diplo, certainly. But I think we're always going to be behind a little bit. So I think we'll take the... Not so much because I want the colony range, but because I want the domestic trade power. That was the main reason for taking that. So let's just start making a little bit more money now. Um, situation doesn't appear to have changed much here. Ming is getting rid of his war exhaustion. Um, he's also recovering his manpower. He's still in debt. Yeren, yeah, they're not going to get involved. So maybe it's something that we have to consider doing on the next video. But we are over the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to end things there. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you are still enjoying EU4 as Japan. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye for now.